What's going on guys? Welcome to RNW Recording. Today we're going to be talking about how you can use your Kemper Profiler with the Universal Audio Oxbox. All right, so just a couple things before we actually get started and talking about how this is all rigged up and stuff like that. Um, you might be asking, what's the reason that you might want to use your Kemper and your Aux together? Well, I think that the Kemper does um, a few things really well. It's got some really great built-in effects, and it's like the amp models or the amp profiles that are in it are um, really good in my opinion. But I think that, you know, you're going to gain a lot of versatility with using the aux for your cab and speaker and mic modeling, opposed to um, just kind of dealing with whoever created the profile and, you know, how how they went about creating it. You kind of, you, you take out the cabinet equation in, in the situation. And I think as recording engineers, being able to have that added versatility to where we can actually model the speaker cabinet, uh, the speakers, the mics, you know, the EQ and all that stuff, uh, post what the amp's doing, I think that that helps us in our workflow a lot. That's why I think making this video for you guys is important. Starting out with how I have this wired up. So the Kemper profile is uh, running straight out of the direct outs, going straight to the Universal Audio aux box. Um, right into where it says from speaker, I believe is what it said. It's the one with the red nut on it. And then from there, I have two just TS cables running straight out of it. And I'm going into my warm audio 412 uh, channel strip. And the reason that I'm doing that is because Kemper actually makes two different types of um, profilers. They make the powered version and they make the unpowered version. I currently have the unpowered version. So mine basically deals with line level signal. Um, it's really great for recording. Um, but what we need to do is we need to get the Kemper to kind of create some signal to where the aux is seeing it. And then we also need to take what the aux is sending to our interface and also bump that level up again. And that's why I'm using the 412 is just to gain some level out of all this stuff working together. If you had a powered Kemper, your life would be a whole lot easier because you wouldn't have any issues sending signal to your aux and the aux being able to see the signal and, you know, being able to work its magic. So with the 412, we uh, were actually not padding the signal, obviously, because we we want as much signal as we can going back to our DAW. From there, I'm going to console. I have a universal audio interface. So um, I can actually do some things in inside console to get our level up if I need to. But I'm trying to keep the interface side of things kind of out of it because a lot of people use a lot of different types of interfaces. And, you know, you guys might not have all this stuff. I assume that you guys have gain knobs on your interfaces, so if you actually needed to gain up the volume more, you could uh, if you wanted to go that route, but <clears throat> we also want to keep our signal to noise ratio down as much as possible, and with this setup, you're actually going to have more signal to noise than you would if you had the powered version of the Kemper. So let me grab a guitar and I'll be right back. We'll go through the aux app and I'll kind of show you how I'm working this stuff around. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and unmute these channels and you should hear right away that we've got a little bit of noise going on, but um, when you start playing, that noise kind of goes away. So you can use gates or you know, go in between spots where you're not playing on the guitar in the recording and just cut it out like you probably usually would. So. And let's look at what we're doing inside the aux. So, 
just go ahead and get rid of that. So as you can see on your uh, Aux app, it's going to make a little bit of a difference as far as volume whenever you are um, using either 50 watt or the 100 watt setting. I think that you drop a little bit of noise in, in or you drop a little bit of level in the 100 watt section. Might not be noticeable. I mean, there's a little bit of a difference in the volume, not a huge amount, but still sounds great. So like I said, in the Aux app, obviously on my Kemper you can see here that I've got the cabinet off. That's going to make a huge difference in your sound. If you plug it up and you don't turn the cabinet off, you're going to be like, why does it sound so weird? And there's off. So going back to the app, you have so much versatility with the aux as far as what you want to do with what your amps running into and just to mention this is a, a Friedman BE 100 model um, I'd have to look and see who made it because they actually did a really really good job I don't think this is a I don't think this is a Michael Britt profile or anything of that sort I think I just got this off the rig exchange <clears throat> the author is biz so Biz, whoever you are, thank you. You made a really awesome profile and I love using this one. All right, back on track. So obviously with the, the Aux app, you get all these different types of microphones to use. You can use them in pretty much any sort of configuration that you want to. And then you got room mics. Um, so obviously this room mic setup looks like it's some sort of R121 clone and then like maybe a, a AEA of some sort. So clearly you can pan left, right. You got EQs on your channel already so you can adjust all that stuff. And um, another good thing that you can use this for is if you don't want to commit on the way in you can find a way around it you know just make sure you record your DI signal and then you can come back after your artist has already done their performance and then you can use something like a reamp box or something and really sit down and try and get scientific and figure out what tones you're wanting to use uh, later on so I mean to sit here and tweak and stuff in the session if you got time for it go for it, but I would say just use a DI, maybe some sort of amp plug-in just to get the feel down, and then go back and take that DI signal and then really craft it into something awesome with the, the gear that you have. So this one seems to be, it says 412 Greenback 25 Punch, so I would assume this is some sort of Marshall cabinet, probably really appropriate for the Friedman that we're using. <laughs> Sounds awesome. So obviously we can go to like a a 50s era. It's a tweed fender cabinet of some sort. And you can you can change it up. This one's got greenbacks. <laughs> Really, really honky. <clears throat> so, yep, I'm not really going to go through a whole, bu a whole bunch of stuff with the um, Kemper, obviously. You're just going to take your, your your main meat of your tone with the amp and you're going to send it to the aux. Obviously once you're in the aux you're going to model your cabinets and all that stuff and I I don't think sitting here and showing you guys all that stuff is going to be really conducive to you guys um, as recording artists because you guys have your own ears you're going to know what sounds good to you and you know there's loads and loads of great videos that will probably be way more in depth than this um, so 
that being said, I just wanted to show you that a situation like this is possible. It gives you a whole different world to work in whenever it comes to recording guitars. And uh, I hope you guys found this, you know, somewhat helpful. Maybe this um, might inspire you to tinker around with stuff kind of the way that I do and try and find new workarounds for uh, some of the struggles and stuff that we might face and make our lives a lot easier. Last thing before I go, we are reading your guys' comments. We are gonna get to our vocal booth video soon. I know you guys are asking about how we built it, you know, and it was really uh, cost effective the, the, way, the way that we did do it. And um, I think that it's gonna be something that's gonna be really useful to you guys, you know, if you're doing a home, home recording situation like this. That being said, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.